as another example of a hypertrophied left ventricle and a possibly secondary HFPF is a Morbus Anderson Fabry. In this case, I brought you the only case I have seen so far of a Morbus Fabry. We do see here a severely reduced left ventricular function. So this is a case of HFREF. So in this case, we do not have a HFPF. Very often we can still see a normal function also in Fabry patients, but this patient has a very, I would say, unique form of the disease. We do see the binary sign to a certain degree, so the layers of the myocardium, where we do see several layers inside the septum, but it's truly subtle, but it's a thickened septum. So we have a problem of the left ventricle by means of thickened myocardium, but we also have warm motion abnormalities in the apical regions and the lateral regions, and also here in the apical long axis view, we do see that there is a thin, a very thin myocardium, and that leads to this almost dyskinetic part of the ventricle. We can also see it here in the four chamber view. So this is a thickened myocardium, but a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. The ejection fraction we graded in the range of 30% to 25 to 30, I would say. And we also, of course, included strain imaging. And in strain imaging, we do see that overall the global strain in this four chamber view is definitely reduced, but all the individual segments are reduced or show a reduced strain as well. Especially here, the lateral segment shows even some parts of a dyskinesia. We can see it here in this curve as well. Here we also would have some degree of post-systolic shortening. So in this patient, when we add contrast, we can see that the myocardium is truly thin. So it looks like almost like a scar. So it's definitely below six millimeters. We do see some trabeculations. We see the hypertrophied septum. So it's very interesting, but a very atypical case of a Morbus Fabry. So Morbus Fabry is caused by an X-linked mutation in the GLA gene that leads to a deficiency of the alpha galactosidosis A. And this causes a consequent accumulation of toxic metabolites. It's a lysosomal storage disorder. And we do have an oral pharmacological chaperone therapy or enzyme stabilizers to help those patients if they have a specific mutation. But we have to note that it is crucial to prevent the tissue damage. The patient should be treated before they develop organ failure because no treatment can reverse when actually the organ is damaged. So in, in this case, we do have the status quo that we have a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. This patient had a mutation and he is now receiving this enzyme replacement therapy. But of course, in this specific case, we have to think about also bringing this patient, if he further deteriorates, to heart transplantation. But continuing with findings of Morbus Fabry, we already discussed the strain. We do see the LVH or the thickened myocardium again. We have a restriction, a restrictive feeling pattern, diastolic dysfunction, and of course, a vascular defunction is a follow-up of the disease to the coronary artery disease those patients can develop. Interestingly, the scar we see over here was not the problem of a blocked vessel. So there was no significant coronary artery disease present in this specific patient. Patients with Morbus Fabry can show to your department with heart failure, with arrhythmias, with angina, of course, with chronotropic incompetence and even with sudden cardiac death. So these patients are at risk and they can have a specific therapy, a replacement therapy, but of course we have to do genetic testing. Here the bullseye display, which displays quite nicely the basal segments and the reduction in strain in the apical segments, especially in the lateral and inferior lateral region, where we also did see this possible scarring of the left heart. Also in MRI, we can see that there is the LVH. It's nicely shown over here in this Cine loop of the four chamber view. And we do see here is the scar tissue. We also did visualize with echocardiography as well. 
also in his case, the measurement of the diastolic dysfunction revealed a restrictive filling pattern. And that means that elevated filling pressures are evident. In his case, he has a reduction in left ventricular function and he has an E to A ratio far beyond 2.